Welcome to tutorial 4, GPSX Data Input and Output. To best follow along in this tutorial, complete tutorials 1 and 2 to gain background knowledge in creating model layouts, input controllers, and running scenarios. This tutorial will explore the important and useful feature of GPSX to use the data file as an input in time dynamic simulations. Open the layout developed in tutorial 1. If you did not complete this tutorial, you can either do so now or open the model layout under File, Sample Layouts, Tutorials. Be sure to save this tutorial under a different name, such as Tutorial 4. We will now create input controllers for the Influent Composition. Right-click on the Influent and select Composition, Influent Characterization to bring up the Influent Advisor tool. The Influent Advisor will take up most, if not all, of the room on the main window. Click the little right arrow between the User Inputs column and State's Variable column to shrink the window and hide everything except the User Inputs column. Now that you have room, drag the total COD, total TKN, and ammonia nitrogen variables to the control section to create interactive sliders. We will now set up the data files to be read by GPSX during a simulation. There are two methods to doing this, and both will be explored during this tutorial. We will first explore how to manually prepare an Excel spreadsheet and add it to a scenario. This is useful for preparing data input for multiple variables. Locate the GPSX installation directory and navigate to Layouts, then navigate to Tutorials and open the Tutorial 4 Example Data XLS file. This file contains the typical set of time dynamic influent data. Go to File, Save As, and save this data file in the same directory as your GPSX Tutorial 4 model layout. This will make the file easier to find when we need to use it later on. The first column is labeled T for time and below are the units of days represented by the letter D. The first row in columns B through E represent the cryptic variable name. These are the internal short form names used in GPSX calculations. These names are specific to the layout you have created and are different for each variable and object within the model layout. We will now verify that the cryptic names of the data file are the same as the variables for the input controllers. The simplest way to do this is to look at the tooltip that appears when the mouse is hovered over a variable. In the input control panel, hover the mouse over each variable name and confirm that it matches the name in the Excel spreadsheet. The cryptic names for this tutorial are the following. If in tutorial 1 you call the names by a different name, right-click on the variable and select Copy Cryptic Name to Clipboard and paste it into the appropriate location in the Excel workbook. For example, if I had an incorrect name for the Influent Flow variable, I would copy this name and replace the old one in the Excel workbook. If any changes are made, ensure to save the file before proceeding. We will now add this workbook to a scenario. In the Simulation toolbar, go to Scenario Configuration. This window will display all the available scenarios. In this case, we should only have the default scenario available since no other scenarios were developed in Tutorial 1. Select the Data Files button and go to Add. Browse to the appropriate directory where you save this data input file and add it to this configuration. Accept this form to save the changes. Notice that the interactive slider for the inputs have automatically changed to file input controls that cannot be directly edited. The values are now being read in from the file. Run a 5-day simulation with steady state clicked on. As the simulation proceeds, the values of the influent flow and concentration will change in the input controller. The model responds dynamically to changing the input as shown in the increasing effluent solids. The second method of inputting data into GPSX is through using the GPSX data file tool. This is useful for simple simulations where just one or two parameters are being read from a file. We will now create an input controller for the liquid temperature. Right-click on an open spot in the background layout and select System, Input Parameters, Physical Environmental Settings. Drag the liquid temperature to the right of an existing input tab to create a new slider controller on a new tab. Rename this tab Temperature. Right-click on the controller's label and select the Data File option. A new window will be displayed. Enter in this data. Using the tab key, you can move to the next cell. Once accepting this form, you will be prompted to save the file. The default location is the same directory as the layout file, and the default name is the layout's name with the cryptic name of the variable concatenated to it. These defaults are usually appropriate, so click Save to save the file. 
Notice that the interactive slider for the liquid temperature input has automatically changed into a file input control bar and is no longer able to be manually adjusted. Run a 5-day simulation with steady state clicked on. As the model is simulated, the value of the influent flow, concentrations, and temperature will change in the input controller. We will now explore the process of graphing imported data values alongside the simulated results. This is convenient for comparing the measured value from a plant with the simulated results given in GPSX. It also makes it easier to calibrate and optimize the process. Create a spreadsheet file with example measured data. This table is an example of observed total suspended solids data for the final effluent from our example plant. Create a data file with this information and save it in the same directory as the layout file. The cryptic variable name for total suspended solids in the final effluent can be found by selecting output graph properties. Hold the mouse cursor over the variable label and a tooltip will appear with the label and cryptic name information. This should correspond to the name on the first row of the spreadsheet file. Go to the scenario configuration window and add this input file to the model layout. Run a 5-day simulation with steady state clicked on. The data points from the measured data are shown as diamond-shaped points on the graph. The measured data of distributions within a unit can also be plotted along with a simulated result in a bar chart. Create a new blank output tab by clicking on the new graph tab button on the output toolbar. Now let's create a new graph. For this example, we will use the variable for readily degradable soluble substrate in reactors within the plug flow tank. Right click on the plug flow tank and select the output variables, state variables, and individual reactors. Drag the readily degradable soluble substrate in reactors variable under the soluble organic compound subheading to the new tab area. Since it is an array of values, the default graph type is a bar chart. Create an input file with this data. Note the brackets with the numbers beside the cryptic variable name. This represents the reactor number within the aeration tank. The default number of reactors is 4. The cryptic name can be verified using the same method of hovering your mouse over the variable name. Save this spreadsheet file in the same directory as the layout file. Open the Graphs Output Properties button and select the Auto Scale feature for the bar chart. As done previously, add this data file to the scenario. Run a zero day simulation with steady state clicked on. The data from the Excel file should show up in the simulated result as a bar chart. Notice that the simulated result is shown as a colored bar chart and the measured data is shown as a meshed bar chart. Clicking on a bar chart will display the measured data in square brackets followed by the simulated data value. Save this model layout. You have now completed tutorial 4 and should be familiar with the two methods of using data files in GPSX as well as how to plot values from a data file alongside simulated results in GPSX.